So I'm here without the app. Um, hopefully I won't be replaced by an app one day, but that's a bit of a scary concept, I think. So trauma is the leading cause of death and morbidity in people up to the age of 45. And it is also becoming increasingly common for those that are admitted in their elderly years, because we have a lot of active elderly people, trauma is the reason for their admission. We do have a systematic approach to the care of, of injured patients we think is pretty good. And this, this um, approach was pioneered back in 1977 by Dr James Steiner, MD, an orthopaedic surgeon. He was involved in a light plane crash in Nevada um, and that killed his wife and critically injured himself and his three children. And after that, he made the following observation. And I will read this because I think it's important that his words come out as they were said. When I can provide better care in the field with limited resources than what my children and I received at the primary care facility, there is something wrong with the system and the system has to be changed. I don't think they had a map back then either, for what it's worth. He then, after he recovered, went back to the doctors at the facility where he was originally treated and worked with them to improve the system. And that has dramatically um, changed the approach that we take to trauma throughout the world and is actually still the basic principles of how we manage trauma today, whether it's in the developed world or in the developing world. Now, in the 40 years since that plane crash, we've made some fantastic gains and, you know, mortality from trauma in this country has improved by over 50%. And it is truly a multidisciplinary um, specialty and there are many champions from all of the groups that care for trauma patients, from the pre-hospital personnel, our emergency nurses, our emergency colleagues, all of the surgical and medical specialists to our rehab specialists. However, there is still a very long way to go. Bleeding or haemorrhage, as we like to call it in our profession, sounds a bit more dramatic when you say it that way, is the leading cause of preventable death in our trauma patients in this country. And it's surgery that's often required to stop the bleeding. And it's for this reason that surgeons, as a specialist, remain vital to the care of these severely injured patients. There are nine surgical disciplines recognised in Australia and New Zealand at the Australasian College of Surgeons, which has been in the news for all the wrong reasons of late, lo looks after the training of surgeons across the two countries. Of the nine surgical disciplines recognised, trauma is not one of them. Okay? Within the discipline of general surgery, which is my surgical um, specialty, there are fellowship programs that we complete after we've completed our surgical training, such as colorectal surgical training, um, liver surgery, but there's no such fellowship program for trauma. We're not new. Trauma surgeons are not new in Australia and New Zealand. We've acquired our skills, however, through a relatively ad hoc mechanism. Without a defined specialist training program, we've needed to create our own fellowship experiences along the way. And there's not many of us. There's about 25 who identify ourselves as trauma surgeons across both Australia and New Zealand. So we need to cope with the increasing population and particularly the increasing activity of the elderly population. We need to train more surgeons to manage trauma. If you or your loved one are diagnosed with a, a, a complex surgical condition, you want a surgeon who is trained to manage that specific condition. Severe trauma is no different. Trauma is a complex surgical condition. For those of us who identify as trauma surgeons, we really do believe we need a trauma-specific training program in Australia and New Zealand. A trauma fellowship program, this would be called. It's not to create another type of super specialist, but rather to ensure that all surgeons who treat injured patients, regardless of their surgical discipline, general surgery, orthopaedic surgery, neurosurgery, have the training that enables them to give that patient world-class care wherever they work from, whether it's a rural, small hospital through to the major trauma centres. It'll also foster the career development of that next generation that are going to come through and become the trauma leaders throughout the two countries. So that's, I believe, our next challenge as a surgeon is to create a trauma fellowship program and that will mean that trauma will become our next surgical specialty. Thanks. Thanks.